Alright guys, this is a uh, long plane review for The Games Summer Edition, yeah, quite an awkward title, uh, on the uh, Amstrad CPC, and uh, this is another multi-sports game from Epic Software, co-released by US Gold in the uh, UK, and uh, it's got quite a good selection of events, it's probably the most well-rounded sort of and well-presented uh, Olympics style game, and uh, Straight up, I'll be honest and say that this is a, a fairly rushed long play and also a review commentary from me. Um, we're very near to the end of the uh, London 2012 Olympics and my look at these sort of games. And, uh, well, I'm going to be away for a few, for about a week uh, from tomorrow, so uh, I, wanted, I wanted to get it done before the Olympics finishes, and that's pretty much me done for these multi-sport games although I may take a look at say uh, California games and uh, combat school when I get back but yeah this was based on the uh, solar uh, games in uh, 1988 in uh, I think the South Korea the capital of that and here's a nice little introduction scene which uh, is also the sort of the opening ceremony And some uh, really horrible music that's sort of out of tune of itself. Great. Thankfully, that's the only music you get. And here's the Olympic Village where you can choose to do certain events. So we've got blobs and glasses, bending over, bloody hockey sticks, crucifixions, the hokey pokey, uh, Rambo, um, impaling yourself on a spike, and God knows what that was. <laughs> Okay, being serious, that uh, we've got cycling, diving, parallel bars, rings, hammer throw, archery, pole vault and hurdles. So there you go. And there's the world records, which just has names and no sort of uh, score next to it. So like the uh, other Epics games we've looked at, I normally try and... Uh, they're, they're normally for like one to four players, multiplayers. Not for one player, sorry. So... Uh, Previous games I've tried to sort of beat the world records, um, but there isn't really anything recorded there. So we'll just compete in all events and sort of bumble our way through this. Um, some events have done really, really crappily in, and I'll explain why as we get to it. So yeah, we get the opening ceremony again. And there's that god awful music. But hey the presentations at least are quite a few marks up on the previous games it's quite nicely put together so yeah well we can have up to eight players so I'll just chuck my name in and of course we're going to be Great Britain hey haven't the British done well in the Olympics so far I think we're third in the medal table at the moment Anyway, okay, on to the uh, first event, which is diving. And uh, I will try and talk you through the controls as best as possible on this game, as was requested by another YouTube user who's been, uh, I've forgotten his name. But what we're doing here is moving the wheel back by doing fire and right. Moving it further back will mean you get a long, uh, sort of a bigger jump. So you press left to move the board, hold down to get a lot of spring and then press the, the right key to do your manoeuvre press down as you hit the water to dive in nicely and we get a good score there so let's go again, that was a forward dive, I think we're going to do another one I think this is a uh, forward twist which you, which you do by moving the pressing up and fire button and then down to go into the water the last one was a reverse somersault which is just moving the joystick right without pressing the button. Those were the two best forward uh, dives. We're doing a backwards dive now. You press the right key to move to the end of the board, down again to do your jump, the right key, and then down to dive into the water. And uh, not a bad score there. And so that's the diving over. Final score 232. Not the best score I've got on this. But it's the new world record. <laughs> hey. Right, the velodrome, cycling. 
Okay, this is the first event where we're sort of doing some uh, joystick waggling. But it's more about sort of slowly pacing yourself and uh, sort of slow movements. And then uh, then it's epic waggling in the sort of the final lap of three. So that's me at the top there, and that's the computer opponent at the bottom. And then you can tr track your progress to the right of uh, the overhead view of the velodrome. And what, how you beat this level, guys? Um, just stick behind the computer opponent as much as possible and match his sort of speed. When you hear that sort of uh, shh kind of noise, that's basically that basically means you're in his slipstream. See so you uh, that your cyclist has to work less. And the more you stay in that, the more you sort of conserve your energy, and your energy is represented by the uh, by by the green bar underneath the uh, behind view shot of my cyclist may not be obvious but you will see it sort of start to go down as we get further into the race and it's basically just a simple up down up down kind of movement to make your cyclist pedal so yeah just do up and down quicker to make him move faster and for the first two laps it's pretty boring um, not mad keen on the uh, sort of the four colour display uh, the mode one display I'd rather it be nice mode nor chunky pixels and lots of colour as always As you can see guys, the computer opponent's starting to pull away from me a little bit. So I'm moving fast and you can see my energy bar, the green bar just sort of moves to the left a little bit there. As I was increasing my speed. And there it starts to go down again as I'm trying to catch him up. But it soon returns to normal if you're in your sort of slipstream. Moving left and right is pretty much pointless unless you want to overtake him, of course. Strangely, though, you don't see the other com the uh, if the computer opponent is in front of you, you don't see that in your viewpoint. Ah, oh, what the hell! I think I was about to make an early break for it there. I just move left and right just to check uh, which uh, blue blob I am moving around the ring. I'm going to make a move here. I think I'm a little bit early in making a move. I think uh, this is only the second lap, isn't it? When you hear the bell, that is the final lap. And I'm losing lots of energy and stamina, so I've gone a little bit too early there. And I'm getting quite a way behind him now. But that computer opponent, as you can see, he's nearly lost all his energy, so I'm going furiously up and down on the joystick here to catch him up. And... Uh, yeah, I've easily done it. It's got plenty of reserve stamina left, and he's absolutely knackered. And we're about to win, and we've won the race. There we go. Hooray! God, the computer opponent's crap. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Yeah, good score there. And being British, we always do really well in the cycling, so uh, that's to be expected, eh? <laughs> New world record. <laughs> so, right, uneven bars. My God, this is complicated. Um, this is where things start getting really complex and stupid. Um, this event and the rings event is so complicated that there's... Um, you have to take my word for it guys, there's a um, sort of flowchart diagram which is massively complicated in the instruction manual to follow to do your moves and uh, basically guys I gave up trying to work it out, I couldn't be fucked and so I'm just randomly sort of mashing buttons and doing up and down and hoping I'm going to get a good score Uh, 
and it kind of seems like I'm doing all right. I did plan out sort of a move structure, and I was trying to follow it, but it's not clear when you need to like press up or press down or leave the joystick in the center to perform your next move or what's going on. It sort of moves a little bit too quickly, especially the messages there. I suppose you're supposed to go on that. Hey, oh dear, and splat, <laughs> I've landed on the floor. And I think that's pr it's probably a uh, crap score. <laughs> 2.5. Oh well. But yeah, guys. Um, some of these events, um, you know, take a lot, of, a lot of working out and practicing. Like the rings next. Um, again, another massively complicated diagram of potential moves and sequences you need to follow so uh, really you need to have like the manual open up in front of you at least and then practice 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 over and over so for those of you who like your multi-sport games and want to have a bit more of a long-term challenge if you can be asked then uh, at least the uh, parallel bars and the rings here will uh, fulfill your needs but for me uh, I can't be asked. Um, probably from fatigue of like doing all these multi-sport games over the last like a few weeks um, I don't care anymore I just want to get through this so this isn't like an expert playthrough and run through at all in any way shape or form I wanted to get this done quickly because I'm going away tomorrow and be away for about a week potentially so we've got 0 0.8 there <laughs> Uh, that's apparently a world record, but hey. So yeah, the hammer throw, and things get a little bit better here. I quite like this event. That's uh, again sort of a different sequence of buttons here and things you need to do. A press fire button to start, and then you need to do like an anti-clockwise like rotation on your joystick, which is even tougher on the keyboard. Get your speed up. When he's moving fast, we press fire button, start spinning, and then fire button to throw it. And that's a quite a that's a damn good throw. Forty-eight meters. Well, it's not going to be a. I wouldn't wouldn't have done well in the uh, current Olympics. I'll tell you that. You want to get over about 60, 65 meters, don't you? There we go again. So anti-clockwise motion. Nice animation here, I have to say. And when he slows down, you can j it slows down for you to sort of time your fire button press to throw it, which is quite handy. And 48.2, uh, sorry, 48.3. And there's some like really good fun animations actually. If you uh, screw it up, like if you throw it too early, the uh, hammer uh, flies straight into your face out the screen. If you don't let go in time, you're, uh, <laughs> there he goes, he flies off into the distance. And if you don't let go in time, the uh, hammer sort of wraps around you and he goes all dizzy. Very nicely presented, but um, as you can tell guys from the events we've already looked at, it's quite a variable sort of presentation here. It's as if like, uh, well, here we are on hurdles, and again we've got totally different style graphics. And it's as if like... Uh, different programmers worked on different events and he wasn't the same programmer so it's got a very uneven feel to it so here at the hurdles hold the fire button down to start and then release when he uh, fires his gun on the starting pistol there we go I'm on the uh, bottom there and basically you want to time your left right movements the sound of his sort of heat feet hitting the floor you want to jump as one of these feet hits the floor as well. Short fire button to do a short jump, hold down the fire button to do a longer jump. I tend to just hold it down. Doing short jumps apparently gives you more stamina to beat the computer uh, the computer opponent. And uh, I have variable uh, success on, on this event when practicing. Haven't really worked out how to crack it. But this was definitely my best run, um, but strangely enough, on this uh, long play, as it turned out. 
world record there at 14 seconds. I think that was pretty good. And uh, I suppose not a bad event. I think I needed a lot more practice on that. Pole vault. Um, this, uh, this event uh, will take up the most amount of time on this uh, sort of long play because you get three attempts on each height and you can choose your height to start, uh, which height you want to do. We'll start on the lowest height and uh, we've got a uh, left right movement and you've got to sort of time it with his feet again hitting the floor. So I sort of time my joystick movement with the uh, sound of his feet hitting. And that's the fastest he will run. And I think you press the down key. No, I think it's the fire button at the appropriate time of when uh, the pole has gone into the uh, slot there. And then press the up key to fly over the bar. I think that's right. Oh no, sorry, it's the uh, up key when the uh, pole's in the uh, slot and bent enough to uh, fly up in the air and then you press the uh, right key to uh, send uh, send him over the bar. And uh, I did pretty well at this event actually, I picked this up uh, quite quickly, as you can tell I'm doing quite well. So, up, oh, right, and over he goes. Good stuff. Again, the uh, graphics and, uh, you know, uh, character design and colours and things all look very different yet again. So, we've got different programmes and graphics artists on this event. Who knows? I think they're attempting some kind of skewed 3D perspective here, but looks a bit basic and crap, really. The animation's very poor <laughs> on his uh, running legs there. And uh, this is all a little bit flickery as well. So, yeah, let's uh, choose another height. Let's go for 17 metres free. But yeah, I'll say overall, this is probably the best pr put together package of the multi sport kind of games, especially from Epix. I was actually quite surprised how good this was. I was, expected, I was expecting it to be at the level of uh, uh, Summer Games 1 and 2, we looked at in the last two videos. Uh, this is much better. Shame there's not much of a sort of music and sound effects. And uh, there's a good variation in events. Some are more fun than others. I found the archery quite fun, which will I think it's coming up next. Um, but it's whether you can really be bothered and asked to master the uh, like the rings and parallel bars. Um, Cycling was too easy, um, and it uh, doesn't take much to get a good score on the diving. Oh, we're going to move it to the most maximum height here, 19 meters nine. See if we can do that. And I'm th oh, what other events did we have? I've already forgotten. Oh, hammer throw was pretty good fun. Obviously, very similar to um, like track and field. And that was very nicely done. Some nice touches in that event, with uh, some co comedic touches and humour actually, which uh, strangely isn't sort of present in other events. What I mean by that is, there's uh, as as you saw there, if you don't let go of the uh, hammer in time, you sort of fly across the screen and things like that. None of those other touches of humour in the other events, though, sadly. Um, yeah, so overall, I'm going to give this a score because it's sort of coming towards the end of this uh, long play. 
I will probably give this a solid 8 out of 10. I think that's fair. I think I gave Summer Games 1 and 2, I think a 7 and a 7.5 out of 10, and it's definitely a notch upon them. It just doesn't have like the atmosphere and the magic of the uh, Daily Thompson games, even though they were pretty basic and you know, they look a bit crap. Daily Thompson's Decathlon and Super Test just had a, a really nice fun charm about them, a bit like Track and Field, the arcade regional did. This does feel a fairly hollow experience. Again, like my main complaint with these Epics games, um, there's no real target for a, you know, just like a single player. World record. So all you can do is just be, try and beat your own world records each time. So there you go. Could be a lot better. Just had to give some kind of target or goal to uh, reach, really. Or. Uh, qualifying sort of scores and marks before you can move on to the next event so there you go so the archery good stuff fire to start left to move your uh, arm back or right to move it forward so yeah pull it back as far as you can to get the most speed um, check out the wind on the windsock there and then you just need to target like so yeah, just outside the uh, bullseye. Got three arrows, a clock ticking down. But this is nicely presented, I like this. And it's actually quite good fun. It's a shame you only get three arrows because uh, I was quite enjoying that. I uh, wanted more of the archery. And there we go, that's, that's our, and we get our score. So, there we go, guys. That is basically. Um, the games summer edition and there's also the games winter edition and I'll probably look at that at Christmas along with winter winter games but that pretty much concludes my sort of uh, look at the uh, Olympic and multi-sport themed games on the Amstrad here's the uh, ending ceremony of that awful music and uh, couple of weird guys in uh, stripy trousers banging on drums <laughs> so there you go uh, yeah nice yeah, quite well put together a bit of bit of a mixed bunch not very coherent with the uh, style of graphics and uh, presentation but overall pretty decent product actually and probably one of the best sort of multi-sport games based on the Olympics. So there you go. Thanks for watching guys. Yeah, a solid 8 out of 10 from me. Hope you enjoyed these uh, series of videos. I may look at California games and probably uh, Combat School, another sort of mad joystick waggler when I get back. But I've had enough of these for now. I'm off on holiday, so enjoy the rest of the Olympics if, you, if you're watching this today. If not, have a good one. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Cheers. Bye.